untuk presentasi uh, apa um, uh, artikelnya atau papernya. Yes, to Prof Goyang, you are please to present your presentation. Hello, it was nice to meet you. Okay. I'm happy to introduce, I'm, I'm happy to sharing the, my the research area. Uh, I have uh, several friends in Indonesia, in the Jogjakarta University. I already mentioned about uh, him, Agung. So he is very good friend with me. Uh, today, uh, I will do some the one around one month ago, Dr. Ariana, he was the, sending the email to introduce the, uh, my uh, research area, particularly uh, genetically engineered the cattle in the, including the CRISPR-Cas9 system. Mm. So maybe this is the, uh, I am here. Uh, uh, and I, I find out the university, it take the, or around the 17, 17 hours, 40 minutes by airplane from between the Indonesia and the Korea. Uh, without the pandemic situation, if not, maybe we can see offline in the, in the, in the near future, in the next year. I hope so, I wanna go to the uh, Erlanda University. Uh, I heard the, that university is the, one of the very famous one in Indonesia. Uh, so it was the build up the long, long time ago. It's a strong university in Indonesia. I'm very happy to uh, introduce the, my work to in front of the all of you. Uh, so, Firstly, in the science area, maybe everybody will know that. We mostly in the, we called the phenotype, means that something changed. We called it a trait. For example, to understanding trait, we have to make the some gain of function or loss of function. Gain of function, loss of function. Gain means, gain means we give to the, we give to some functional gene to any species. For example, I already showed that this is the, uh, this one generating the, uh, my laboratory. This is the GFP, green fluorescence protein, the mice, a uh, rat. GFP rat. We produced uh, by the genetic engineering system. It means the gain. Originally, the rat don't have the green the gene. To understand the GFP, that gene was inserted in the zygote status. After that, those inserted GFP zygote implanted and then delivered the pulp. That pulp display the, look at this, the beautiful, the green color. So we can see the gain of the function. This is the gain of function. Another one is the loss of function. Take a look, take a look at this, the beautiful, the muscling. This is the natural mutation uh, breed originated in Belgium. Maybe some of them you well know the, this breed. This breed is the Belgian blue. Belgian blue. It was the natural mutation, means the natural trait very, very low uh, statistical error 
in the sum of the gene mutated means the loss of function. Loss of function the show the some the genotyping and the phenotype like like this the uh, Belgian blue. This is the MSTN mutated cow mutated cattle. This is the myostatin MSTN. Uh, this gene was the mutated. It means that this is the uh, one of the negative regulator of the muscle growth. So this gene mutated, it means the muscle growing, it was not controlled. It means the growing is very fastly grown up compared to wild type species. So usually in the, to understanding the biological, uh, biological meaning in the animal, we have to the put the something or delete the something. Put the something means the gain of function and delete the something means the loss of function. Two approach like the gas of function, gas or loss of function, we catch up the meaning in biologically in the animal. It is also correlation of the, the instance of the disease. I hope this is the basic the understanding to that mostly those kind of the gain of or loss of function, it was the starting the, in the based on the low dent species. As you will know that the low dent is the mice and rat. It is very, very popular animal in the research area. And so almost most of the laboratory, they do the mouse and rat experiment to understand the gene function or another function. So this is the kind of the how big difference between the mice and the rodent and the cattle. Maybe you are all of them is the veterinarian, is best school. So this is kind of the basic information for us. The uh, mouse, the lifespan is the two or three years. The cattle, 15 or 20 years. The reproduction system, gestation period, the mouse is three weeks, uh, cattle is the nine months. Little size cattle is the single parity, and then mouse is the five or 10. The puberty and embryo culture is quite different. In cattle, it needed the over than uh, six days, but mouse, three or four days enough for culturing to blastocyst and embryo transfer one or two and in mice or 10. This is the general uh, uh, basic the reproductive physiological uh, information between mice and uh, the cattle. Another one the, in the in biotechnological issue, in the mouse area, there will be germline transmitted embryonic stem cell. I was the first start in the Canada. In there, I was handling the uh, embryonic stem cell to engineering the, uh, make the, produce the mouse, knockout mouse. At that time, I culturing the long times for mouse embryonic stem cell. Based on the mouse embryo stem cell, it's easily expanded the cell culture. And then also we can easily uh, engineering the cell line. It means the easily produce the, some genetically engineered the rodent. Another one, technologically, there will be some chem chimera and micro injection, blastocyst uh, irrigation, and stomato sperm mediated gene transfer or some zygote fusion or another one kind of exit. Uh, in the low dense species, 
there are many kinds of the, not many, several kinds of the uh, technical uh, system to produce the genetically engineered the animal. However, in cattle, currently, there is no germline transmitted embryonic stem cell. And also, we have to mostly depend on the somatic cell nuclear transfer, means the, we call it the cloning, uh, reproductive cloning kind of that. Another one approach on micro injection. So basically, I was the, already mentioned about I was the postdoc in the in Canada at that time. I was catch up the history of the genetically engineered mouse. So we have to we have to the handling the some the rat the over then the rat side means the rabbit, the goat, sheep. Uh, pig and cattle. It's a specialized animal for veterinary medicine area. So to do genetically engineering the large animal, I have to lesson from the genetically engineered mouse, lesson from the genetically engineered mouse. So this is kind of the historical progress in genetically engineering mouse. Around the 30 years ago, 30 or 40 years ago, uh, in scientists, they experiment the experiment the some the animal models using the wild time, and then they induce the some uh, genetic defect or disease incidence by some induction kind of the drug or chemical or food. After that, many scientists find out some gene is very play the key role in embryogenesis, or it was the related the instance of the disease. So they after that scientists uh, they produced uh, some genetically engineered mouse. It's a uh, based on the ubiquitous expression. Ubiquitous expression means all gene was the express the whole body. We called the another one constitutive expression. So I already mentioned about the GFP. So in they made the some whole body GFP expression mouse. And then uh, in scientists in using the dead mouse model. In the meaning while there are some the gap between the whole body expression and tissue specific expression. So scientists, scientists, they hope we're gonna do making the tissue specific, means the organ specific uh, disease model. And then they make the such as kind of the long, for example, long specific expression model. The other organs is the wild type. This is the very, very specialized mouse for only the long study. And then another they developing the some the conditioned mouse means the the mouse was the born means the wild type. This mouse. They didn't show any genetic mutation before initiating initiating the some the signal. Some kind of signal, some kind of signal the put into the mouse, for example, the lung, the signal will be activated the some regulation gene element. After that, the signal deleting the some the controlled the switch, and then the lung. It's the own. So nowadays, in the many scientists, we are developing the very exact the controlled the mouse model means the own of gene regulated one.
So on of gene regulated mouse will be powerful tool to understanding genetic function and other stem cell function or some uh, trait function in the lifestyle. So basically, this is uh, the uh, scientific progress in the mouse. I catch up the, this uh, history. Oh, I see. May, may if I make the, some uh, genetically engineering cattle like this mouse one, in the future, we can see very big science using the cattle. Now let me start to the some of the some our real talk about the genetically engineering cattle. Take a look, look at this the picture, first one. My laboratory is very specialized the in vitro fertilized production embryo. This one, this is the bovine in vitro mochard uh, oocyte, and the progen so the sperm is the is going around. For fertilization is going well. Uh, after 24 hours maturation and IVF, we remove the this the cumulus cell. It's surrounded the some this cumulus cell. Only the embryo take out for culturing. Means the culture means the the embryo developing into the blastocyst stage. The most of the uh, IBF in vitro fertilized bovine embryo laboratory, they do use the, some culture media. So it was the commercially available one. However, I did the, around the 10 years ago embryo culture understanding system in my laboratory. We have to make the one of the specialized uh, some bovine embryo culture medium. So that medium supporting the high embryonic development. I will introduce the, this the video clip. Take a look at this, the, this bovine embryo, in vitro bovine embryo will be grown up into blastocyst very well. Take a look at this video. This is the live uh, capture imaging. This video clip uh, took a record four days. And then you can see most of the embryo grown up into blastocyst very well. This is the kind of the chemically defined media. Some of the bovine embryo culture media, they contain the bovine serum albumin or fetal serum. The kind of the macromolecule serum or albumin will support in the high embryonic development. However, containing the bovine serum or fetal embryo, the fetal serum, they, because, the, because of the containing the, a lot of kind of the growth factor, it was the correlation with the large, off, uh, large offspring syndrome. So in some of the laboratory, still they are using the BSA and FBS. After treatment to the BSA, FBS, we're gonna get the high embryonic development. But it was the correlation of the large offspring syndrome. It means that we're gonna do get the giant cap. The giant cap is a kind of the dystocia problem between the mother and the baby. So it is one of the big issue in the in vitro fertilized embryo. However, our culture media is a well developing system without any animal serum. 
Also, another one, we are developing the cryopreservation. You know, the those blast system, sometimes we have to frozen the in the refrigerator because the, this blast system is very important resource. Uh, without the surrogate, those embryo will be discarded. However, if we save those embryo into the liquid nitrogen, in the future, there will be sowing and survive and transfer the, into the recipient. We can get the survive the very good genetic resource. Take a look at this one. Most of the frozen embryo after sowing, after 10 years, 24 hours, embryo will be survived. This is the very uh, unique the cryo preservation system. We call it the slow freezing system. Based on the, our slow freezing system, uh, over than 80 or 90 percent plus system, after sowing, they will be survived. Those in vitro fertilized the frozen soil or fresh embryo into the into transporter in the recipient. And then finally, we can see the pregnancy, like take a look at the babies, the cat. This is kind of the in, in vitro production, the calf system. If you, uh, if you want more information, my study, I'm summarizing the three paper. This is the culture media. This is the cryopreservation. Freezing. This is the gene expression. Dr. Islam, uh, he was the, from the Egypt. He was the PhD student in our laboratory. He was the, uh, came from the Egypt, supported by Saudi Arabia uh, Scholarship Bank. He did very well in my laboratory. He very easily catch up the bovine embryo culture system. Now he uh, back to the in Egypt. Uh, he is the now is the one of the faculty member in the Saudi Arabia, and he is the specialist in the camel, not bovine. He is the now is the uh, specialist the camel study in the Saudi Arabia. Another one is the, I already previous, just, just the, introduced the very brief, the in vitro fertilized embryo production and freezing and transfer system. This is kind of the general practice for embryo transfer in the bovine field. In, if you are veterinarian, if you go to the farm or something special institute or center, you can do the embryo transfer by rectal partition. Even me, I visited my research farm to embryo transfer. And then another one, uh, my postdoc uh, supervisor, he is the very famous guy, uh, Anders Nagy. He was the leading scientist in genetically engineered mouse. When I was postdoc in the Canada, uh, he showed a lot of kind of the genetic engineering the tools. For example, the some cassette exchange, gene exchange system, and gene deletion system, and integration system, on off system. This is kind of the basic the molecular biological test one. We can to control the sum of the gene, kind of the exchange or delete or integration or on off. This is the well-known the system for the genome and regulated the cell line or animal. 
I tested, uh, I tested uh, those kind of the genetic regulated uh, four kind of system uh, into the bovine or porcine fibrorust. This one also already published in the paper, one of the in the transposon system. This is the transposon system. This is the non-viral, non-viral gene delivery. Non-viral gene delivery system. In the first, in the in the world, we are the first leading group non-viral gene transfer into the bovine cell. This is the first publication in the bovine embryo using the transposon system. Also, I already mentioned about the several kinds of the delete, exchange, delete, or integration, on-off. It was tested in the porcine cell or bovine cell. It was published uh, some nice review paper Transgenesis in the pig model. It was the paper published in the JBS, Journal of Veterinary Science. Uh, if you are more information, you can visit the website and then download the two paper, the production of the transgenic bovine cloned embryo using piggyback transporter. Another one, uh, transgenic for pig embryo. It takes around the four year, four or five years to establish the those kind of the genetically engineered system in the lifestyle. So let's start the genetically engineered cat. By the post national government project, the aim, the objective means the aim is the to produce the uh, humanize the milk. It means the, we can control the milk composition. After genetically engineering cat, we can produce the special protein in the cow milk. That cow milk containing the human protein for therapeutic or disease or any uh, research protein. To do that objective, we starting the in vitro fertilization, IVF in vitro fertilization, and then the non-viral transport system. Non-viral transport system injected there, and before the embryo trans uh, transfer, we find out uh, some positive blood flow system. GF and the surrogate will be pregnant. Pregnancy, and then deliver the cat. And we analyzing the NGS sequencing, next generation sequence to, to understanding uh, where, how many gene was integrated in the cat. So I will do introduce uh, my the big story start here. This is kind of the uh, today the main topic, the content in the genetically engineered cat. Uh, 2016, we firstly generating the some transgenic cattle using the DNA transfusion system. It was published the scientific report 2016. And then we was the summarizing the, the review paper about that, the developing the genome engineering the technology in cattle from random to specific. After that, we also monitoring the some genome transmission. It means the first one, if this one, we have to generating the several kinds of the transgenic cattle. And that male and female, they will be grown up. Means the, they become an adult, puberty. And the male and female, we are breeding, cross. Both are transgenic. 
and then we follow up the next generation. We're delivering the another generation cache, and then we analyzing the the trust gene transmit to the in the next generation. This paper was studied about the long term long term health monitoring and germline transmission in transient cattle. This is the kind of the, the first report in the transient cattle in the world. Uh, this is the F0 founder animal female. F0 male. We have to do, make the F1 generation. In the paper, we make the the male F1 generation. During the, this stay, we collecting the regularly blood sample for monitoring the health condition, those the transgenic cattle, because the, some of the scientists or some critics, they will be investigating the what happened to health in your transgenic cattle. That's why that's why we regularly collect blood to analyze the what happened the problem in the liver function, kidney function, any kind of the, the hematologic change. Take a look at this paper, this one. Look at this paper. You can see a lot of the information about the germline transmission in transient cattle. This is published in 2018. After that, this F1 generation grown up again. F1 generation grown up puberty. And we can produce the next generation F2 embryo. Another generated one. So we published about the biological of the poor production. Uh, it's a very well known, very famous journal in the reproductive biology area. Everybody well known that here. So we are analyzing the F2 generation is grown up very well. And then again, F0 gene, F0 gene transmitted F1 and transmitted F2. It means our transgenic the cattle completely proved the germline transmission. Maybe we can easily expand the number of the transgenic cattle. And another one, recently we established the based on the, those kind of the genetically engineered cattle. At the time, we testing the, some several kind of the genome editing tools, zinc finger nucleage and tile repacker nucleage and CRISPR Cas9. We test the several kinds of the genome editing tools in the bovine cell. And then uh, 2015, we have to publish the increased per Cas9 activity in bovine cell in the world of the world. After that, based on the that CRISPR Cas9 system, we deleting the some the myostatin gene in our animal. So the last month we published the, some the myostatin knockout cattle. Or improving, improving, improving the the growing of muscle amount. I will show you some more detailed the data about uh, this five the uh, paper. We did the, some the tetracycline on off embryo. This embryo was implanted. Take a look at this pregnancy. Uh, unfortunately, the pregnancy not maintained to the gestation. And in the middle of that in pregnancy, we collecting the, the tissue. A tissue exposed the doxycycline. Doxycycline means the uh, key regulator uh, materials to on off. So look at this the Peter's embryo. 
and then doxycycline on means the gene is on system and doxycycline off so we didn't see anyone so in this study we can control the um, target gene in bovine tissue by doxycycline and then in the base on the transporter system we produce the the nine transgenic cattle we named the snu sublational university and the sleeping beauty number one snu piggyback number one piggyback number two three four five six seven eight we produced the nine nine transgenic system take a list the sleeping beauty piggyback and the cattle hanu and dairy one Hosting, hosting, hosting. The gender, female, female, male, 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 female. This is the representative of the image. I captured the, some uh, image from the journal. Take a look at this, uh, this YFP, yellow putty and then green protein and another green protein in there nose and intestine spleen heart the river also nose the tongue and a lot of the all of the tissue they express the green fluorescent gene it means the uh, gain of function is works well in the beef capture system also another one we testing the in the dairy cattle system Holstein using the Holstein after in vitro fertilization the gene was integrated we can see ubiquitous expression look at this the eye and the nose it's beautiful expressed in all of them and then the number SV1 PB1 this is the first baby and second baby. It was grown up uh, 51 months and 44 months. Now it's the, the eight years old, seven years old. They are still grown up without uh, any health issue. We collecting the some oocyte and the sperm here and IVF, we can see where of the bovine blood sources too. And all of the hematology analysis is the reference the range. The F0, F0 transgenic cattle delivered in the F1. F1 was the collecting the tissue and the culture in the cell laboratory. This was collecting the, this one. And then we did the CRISPR Cas9 system. And then take list to the green was changed in the red. So we hope, we believe that that transgenic cattle well regulated the transporter and CRISPR system. Two more deep understanding, our transgene means the gain of function. We have to understand in the that gene uh, integrated the where, how many. So our collaborator team, genome analyzing the company, there will be uh, first moving the company in our country. They will do analyzing the, sorry, genome analysis and they identified the three locus chromosomes four four six three only three transgene integrated in the bovine genome and it works well and that was the transmitted the, into the next generation this is kind of the summary about that I already mentioned the well, F0, F0, F0. 
and F1, another F1, and we're collecting the serum. This is collecting the, the fibroblast, and serum, wild type mouse, and the oocyte, and fertilized, and transfer. And then we can see another next generation, in the F2 generation, in bovine and uh, bovine transgenic cattle system. One of the some uh, we are analyzing the copy number dependence expression. You know the some the gain of function. Sometimes we can gain the one gene, or sometimes two gene, or sometimes three gene. So for the many scientists, it's very interesting. What happened to the in the integration number? So unfortunately, one of the pregnant uh, F1, the female one. It was the aborted, and then we collecting the, the uterus, ovary, oocyte, and cumulus. All of tissue, the GFP, dream process, is well expressed there. And then we comparing the number of the integration one. Take a look at this one is the three copy and six copy. And then we compare to the expression level. This one is the three copy. This is the six copy. And calculating the some expression level, almost the, the difference is the twice. So we conclude today, but this is kind of the limited study in, in my system, but is the gene expression, is the correlation with the integration of the number of the uh, transgene. So in the future, you wanna do understanding some of the gene, you have to, uh, in advance, considering the integration of the transgene. Another one, we also follow up the some transgenic cattle. We firstly F01, F01, female, male, and the breeding and delivered. We collect the milk from the transgenic. And then we, under the microscope, we can see yellow protein expression in the milk. Oh, it was a very excited one because we can change the composition of the milk. Another study one in Holstein study, we have to design the cassette about the human interleukin-2 and the green process protein. We have to the two target gene integrating the in the Holstein. So finally, we generating the some the interleukin-2 and GFP, dual function transgenic cattle. They are grown up into the property and breeding, and we collect the milk, and another one analyzing the green person. Green, another one interrupting two Eliza reaction. Take a look at this. We can see wonderful imaging, the green process protein in the milk, or another one is the human cytokine well expressed in the bovine mammary gland mammary species. So we convincing, wow, if we gener engineering the mammary gland in the bovine, we can produce a lot of kind of the very valuable protein using the cattle system. To do the valuable cattle, we change the strategy, the transposition into the CRISPR-Cas9. So CRISPR-Cas9 is very popular one. It's well applicated in the nowadays. So we can deleting the some specific locus by Cas9 protein. And then the double strand break was often 
After that, the double strand break with they want they gonna do repair. In during the in the meanwhile of the repair system, some the double strand break will be repaired that kind of the non-homologous end joining mutation. It means the after cutting down and then repair, there will be in the meaning of the repair system, there will be randomly mutation one. After that, we inserting the some the homology arm, the DNA will be integrating the by the specific locus. Take a look at this one. So this is kind of the summary of the genome engineering the uh, Cas9 system, knockout and login system. If you more information, if you find out the Googling, put into the CRISPR Cas9, a lot of kind of thousands of paper that will provide the basic information how to work the, in the CRISPR Cas9 system. We are uh, over than five years, over than five years, optimized. The, optimize the CRISPR-Cas9 system into cattle. And then finally, finally, we can generating the myostatin mutated cattle without exogenous gene integration using CRISPR-Cas9. Take a look at this, this one. Look at this one, muscle. This is the Korean native beef cattle. We can mutate the, the by CRISPR-Cas9 system. And then MSTN is the negative molecular, mo negative muscle growth inhibitor. We induce the mutation that gene indicating the muscle growing was not controlled. Means that it's grown up more high amount of growth. Take a look at this, the beautiful image. So this is kind of the very similar breed, Belgian blue and Piedri Montes. This is the very representative of the breed, Belgian blue Piedri Montes. This is the natural mutation. It's the well established by natural breeding during the over than 50 years. 50, 50 years, so it's a long, long history. But only two years, I'm testing the two years, we generating the, some the uh, similar natural mutation. In their paper, we designing the axon two myostatin, axon two mutation, and then injecting the some guide RNA for reducing the integration. And then we analyzing the processes too. We can see very a lot of kind of the mutation. And then only uh, 12 mutation sequence embryo will be implanted and then grown up. And we can see one. So we produced the three uh, MSTN mutated one. Take a look at this. The single sequencing area, the minus 12 BPS deletion, and gene expression is decreased, and the muscle growth is increased. Wow, we can see nowadays the customizing the animal model in our system. Now we are studying the some one more step to find out the online transmission. In previous study, we produced the, some, the, this one is the dead and the female, male and female. We produced an, more than 99% bioallelic knockout and 10% mosaic knockout. And we collecting the ovium pickup and wild type sperm and mutant sperm. 
So we can see a bioallelic embryo and monoallelic embryo. And then with the sales, the sperm will be oocyte to fertilize the wild type. And then we can see monoallelic and wild type. And then some of them embryo will be donating the some the electroporation. We can see another engineering the double knockout and monolink knockout. Hopefully, we can see a lot of kind of those kind of the myostatin cattle the next year because nowadays we are freezing the embryo and we IVF the embryo for expanded the mutated the cattle. Another one still progress that project was starting over, over the six years old. At that time, the CRISPR-Cas9 imaging system, the notion, it was the very hot one. And then we Cas9, we Cas9 was injecting the bovine embryo and then find out some Cas9 activation. We have to generate in the four. Two was dead, and then another two one was breathing, and then generating the another one generation. We collecting the some tissue, take a look at this one, all of the mutation, and then the somatic cell nuclear transfer, it was the works well. And the gene is the mutation one, it was confirmed with the another one. This is the last uh, slide for you. Basically in the oocyte and sperm and fertilization. Our lab was starting the, this one, in vitro fertilization. And then collecting the embryo and selecting the one and transfer the one and recipient was delivered the general in vitro fertilized offspring. This kind of the in vitro fertilization to understanding in bovine embryo, it was the correlation of the uh, mouse area in the initiative of the, my talk. I also mentioned about uh, how to listen from the genetically engineered mouse. So in there, we can do a lot of the scientific understanding how big difference between the mouse and the bovine embryo. And then we have to some testing the, the sexing, means the PCR based one. So we can see sex, sex determined, sex determined offspring. Because some of the animal farm, they need only female. We need only male. So embryo stage, we can do a PCR or some allied reaction for X chromosome specific. So we can see one section one and another one genetically engineered the offspring and there will be in, uh, collecting the in the blood and the milk. Already the milk is the commercialized one, several articles. So another one, so in the, uh, the farm field, the very practical one, we can see in what actual insemination, embryo transfer, ovium pickup, and genome-based breed selection, phenotype analysis. We can see genotype-based offspring. It is very important to all communicate to all of them. This one. This is the, my laboratory of the big project to genetically engineer the cattle. We can to produce the general IVF embryo, genetically engineer the uh, offspring, and then predict the offspring, genotyping based offspring. This is the very powerful tools in the bovine embryo technology in combined with the genetic engineering technology, including the CRISPR-Cas9 system. 
Thank you for your attention. This is the, my Seoul Regional University Broccoli, Dr. Won Yuri and Woo Je Che, and Suyong Yeom, Lee Ji Yeon Lee, uh, Ji Yeon Park, to Yoon Kyung Jin, Kyung Min Kim. And our some um, soil milk perforation system that will be supporting the some um, the farm and embryo transplant. And my collaborator, Jin Su Kim, he is the IBS Institute. He is the number one guy in genome editing area. He he consults many kind of technical issue in our study. And Sok Jung Gi, also main team leader in the same group. And then Song Jin Gi and Kara Jin, she, he is the sequencing. And the Dero one, he was the protein. Dae Gyun Jung, also another protein. They are do all together with me to step by step to go on in the future genetically engineering cattle. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, time's going on, 15 minutes. 15 minute. If you have any question, let me know. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, Prof Gu, thank you very much for your presentation. It, it's, it's really interesting. It's really uh, many things. Uh, to be learned, to be studied more. And uh, although we know about embryo transfer, embryo production in vitro, and uh, yeah, but still we have to know uh, uh, more and more. You mentioned all about your paper. It's it's too small in, in my screen. It's difficult okay. to follow, yeah. But I will search uh, and I think you can give us uh, all your paper, isn't it? In we can search ourselves, of course, uh, from Science Direct. Uh, but uh, but yes, maybe you have given them to to Dr. Adiana. Then Adiana will uh, share. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, of course, is it interesting? Uh, please. Uh, may I explain in Bahasa Indonesia first to my student? Ya, saudara-saudara, ini tentang tadi tentang rekayasa genetika. Kita sudah sering melihat kita eh kita sudah sering membaca gitu ya melihat tentang trans pem, apa pembentukan transgenik apa hewan transgenik gitu ya dibuatnya dari oocyte dan sperma yang dimanipulasi sehingga jadi sesuatu. Nah, tadi Prof. Go sudah mempresentasikan penelitiannya. Prof. Go has already show us all the research concerning how to make a transgenic cow, something like that, gitu ya. Dan uh, uh, apa? If you have any question. Uh, Uh, please, please ask some question, and we will. Adiana and me would like to assist you to help you in translating, maybe. But uh, yeah, please raise your hand. Uh, I mean, please write your question. Ibu tunggu sampai. Okay. Okay. In the meantime. Uh, When we wait for the another question, Prof. Go, may I ask some question? Yeah. When you when you make the the embryo in vitro, yeah, the embryo in vitro, uh, you you show in the in your first slide that apa um, the embryo uh, hatch. Hatch, mm -hmm. yeah, the embryo hatch, yeah, okay. Ah, huh. yes. You say in day day four they hatch. Yeah, they hatch. They hatch on day four. No, no, no. 
this is the we uh, early stage we didn't record it was recording the a cell stage okay yeah so, so seven days recording oh, yes seven yeah that's but why I, uh, the three days we didn't record that and mm -hmm. four days we recording oh but, i see yeah later stage okay okay yes at the, yeah the same as us so so when you uh transfer the the blastosis uh the, yeah the when you transfer to the recipient so is it before they hatch isn't it yeah before hatched almost the okay. compact modular and uh, uh, expanded blastocyst mostly we transfer the recipient before yes. the hatching yeah jadi saudara-saudara uh, transfer embryo dilakukan sebelum hari sebelum mereka hatch ya yeah. what is hatch hatch to menetas dari zona pelusidanya they come out from the zona pelusida ya yeah, before it uh, itu harus sudah ditransferkan oke okay, gitu ya kalau pembuatan embrio ya maaf ibu loncat-loncat tetapi itu yang uh, kita tahu nah uh, dengan ekspresi gen tadi dia bisa jadi gennya saudara di embrio kan gennya sudah ada gitu ya gennya sudah uh, apa sudah di situ nah manipulasi gennya itu tergantung kita mau 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 bikin hewan seperti apa gitu nanti kita tanya lagi ya dan caranya itu tadi bisa exchange bisa integration bisa dilation bisa on off itu tadi caranya ya oke okay. hmm. okay. uh, second question for the transgenic cattle prof go mm -hmm. Yeah, so you need to check the blood regularly, isn't it? Yes, right. Uh -huh. How how regular? Uh, uh, and what for? Three or four times per year. One year we collecting the three or four times blood collection. Mm -hmm. So what is what does does it mean? I mean, what is the aim of your check? Do you think there is a something <laughs> happen? No, no, nothing different. Nothing different. It's, oh. it's already normal. It's it's all normal. Yeah, it's the normal reference range. We are analyzing the all of the CBC mm -hmm. and then the serum chemistry, including mm -hmm. the some ALT, AST, ALP, the mm -hmm. cholesterol, the fatty acid, a lot of kind of that. There is mm -hmm. most of the reference range, normal. It's normal. Yeah. Uh, is it as normal as non-transgenic cattle? Uh, Yes, the, we we already compared to them. You already compared, okay, okay. And uh, about milk analysis of transgenic cow, mm -hmm. better or higher protein content, casein content, or and how about the microorganism? Yeah, we didn't analyze about that. In the future, I wanna do that. Thank you okay. for your good questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's supposed to be uh, better or higher, maybe, yeah maybe the casein yeah, right. protein and uh, lower of the organism i think yes <laughs> okay uh, ayo saudara ibu tunggu question ya uh, next i think uh, okay you improve the trait of, of i saw one of your slide the belgian blue mm -hmm. uh, you cross with with monstessa apa? Yeah, the Montes. Pit Montes, yeah. Hmm. So what is the offspring name? It's 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 interesting we, to see the the gluteus. We, yeah, offspring. we we didn't the name the line now. The, we will do, we'll do make the name. Yeah, yeah. I think you have to make the name. So so oh yeah, this is uh, transgenic uh, between Belgian blue because. I don't know whether you whether you agree or not that Belgian blue is not easy to handle, isn't it? It's not easy to keep. Yes, right. Yeah. So if you if you can make this kind of uh, cattle, mm -hmm. think, uh, it's better for the farmer, especially in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. It's not so big. Yes, but right. Yeah, uh -huh. 
but the carcasses is also uh, uh, high. We are now analyzing the, the must composition. Also, I already mentioned about we are keep going the some the germline transmission to expand the number of the mutated one. Uh, the okay, the muscle you mm -hmm. analyze the muscle. How yes, about yes. The, how about the taste and the lean? Maybe next year I will share the, the some my data. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. But it's supposed to be uh, lean, more lean. Yeah, yeah, lean. And tasty, isn't it? Yeah, tasty is good. <laughs> I hope so. Hope so. Okay, because uh, Japan has wagyu, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, right. Japan is the wagyu, in Korea is the hanu. Oh, I see. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got a one question in the chatting room. Uh, Adita, three. The hello, Dr. Zhang. I want to just ask about the MST mutation use the cattle using the first cas nine. Uh, is this kind of the gene lockdown really safe for human consumption? If we use to boost the meat production, as far as I know, MST is a mutation induced the most hypertrophy. Is there any risk this mutation will pass the human? And then will the, this kind of the technology will be cost friendly to be application production phase? Thanks. Yeah, I hope so because the first question is about the, some the safety issue. Uh, 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 in the South America, in Japan, and uh, Australia, uh, over then, over then, probably ten countries already the testing is the safe. Means the CRISPR Cas9 based the knockout, not knockdown, knockout the animal will be safe for human. The, that will be first answer for the question. Second one is about the costly factory one. I hope so. Believe that because the, I'm I'm under the investigation about the, some cost effectively uh, uh, you know, uh, production field. So I hope so. Next year we can generate the more more MST uh, mutated cattle to evaluate into in terms of the cost to the infection. Thank you for your questions. Keep following the, my research. Okay, good question, Aditya. Uh, is do you understand, Aditya? Where is Aditya? Can you show off? Yang mana, Aditya? Okay, and any question more? Ibu Tita. Yeah, okay. Assalamualaikum. Okay, okay good questions. afternoon. Uh, Prof. Yong Wong Wong Prof. Wong. Go. Oh, Prof. Go. I see. Go, yeah. So I'm really interested in your field, Prof. So uh, as you told me before, uh, you know, I'm going uh, research in direct cattle. Should we uh, depend on AI, MU transfer, and OPU? So now we back to genome base and breed uh, selection of course and secondly uh, you use phenotypical analysis as we call it of gene base okay so would you tell me please about uh, how much so far of the successful when you use this technology um, and now so next time better we can join together maybe in uh, your field thank you okay well uh, about uh, some the opio system uh, i didn't show the some of the genotype based the dairy cattle opio system in the, our system we, we are doing the some the single mold nucleotide morphology system so we are analyzing the some the production about the opio based and the transfer one. Ah, uh, not yet calculating the exact how much it is, uh, how how efficient you want. So in the future, will be next year we can get uh, many kind of the dairy cat, the based on the opio system. At the time, I will show the some more data, my progress. 
Thank you for your questions. Okay, by the way, we back to your uh, teaching. So as you told me before, uh, it's a part of GFP level with a transgenic copy number. So maybe I'm wrong. So you use uh, SNUF1 uh, with three copy in transgenic copy number, I mean, NS and you have one two with six copy so would you tell me please about the successful and how to use this subject thank you there will be some is the random mutation so transposon system maybe i don't know how much you understanding the of the transposon system transposon is the random mutation the copy of transposition so sometimes the one copy sometimes two copy sometimes two copy it was the very various one. So in in our study, we 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 uh, very by accidentally we find out the three copy or six copy. After that, we comparison the between the two uh, genotyping based study, and then finally we 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 got a, we got a, the uh, difference twice in between the twice the gene copy uh, integration means the twice expression. So in the future, we're gonna do more convinced to copy number and expression based on the rodent, not, not cattle. Because the cattle is very limited species, it's very hard to analyze the species. But in our laboratory, we have the, the rodent system with the rat. We have the many kinds of the many kind of the integration copy number of the rat model. So now it's analyzing the, some of the progress in the about that. Thank you. Thank you, Prof Wong. Uh, I'm really interested in with your work, please. So I'm sorry to that. Uh, my name Harry. I'm doing research in uh, my laboratory in uh, sterility. Sterility is my field. This uh -huh. is one for me, okay? If you don't mind, uh, I'd like to to know more about your experience to me. So thank you so much. We are joined together. Thank you so much, Professor Paul. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. Thank you for questions. Yes. So I, I back to Professor Tita. <laughs> Thank you, Prof Tita. Uh, You're welcome. That's it. Okay. Thank you, uh, Prof Wong. Thank you. You're welcome, Prof Harry. There is another question. Yeah, another question is about uh, some parturition. It's because the Belgian blue is the very uh, uh, high amount of the muscle, muscling. It will be correlation of the distribution. So in the in the Belgian blue species, there are some the, about the incident of the cesarean section. So it is very hard one. But in our case, in ha Hanu, uh, a little bit uh, different from the in the Belgian blue. So we didn't do any uh, cesarean section in my study, but this is the very limited case, only the three. So in the future, we'll do germline transmission. After that, we're gonna do uh, uh, analyzing the some normal or not. Hello? Hello, I'm fine. Okay, yeah. Uh, Saudara Ristaku, is that answering uh, the question? Because uh, baru tiga percobaannya, jadi mereka tidak tahu apakah ada, eh bukan tidak tahu, tidak ada sesar. <tuh> belum di, belum ada uh, laporan mungkin begitu ya, ceritanya ya, gitu. But, if you think, uh, Prof. Go, yes. If if you cross four more in the future, for example, yes. The Belgian blue and pit montes, apa tadi? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, can you guarantee that that there is no, there will no uh, dystocia? I I'm not guaranteed one. <laughs> but uh, I, I will follow the, the my further study. 
Dia Fajar satu tadi aja. Oke, ada lagi saudara-saudara? Ada lagi yang mau ditanyakan? Oke. Okay. I think it's already satu uh, setengah jam ya Mbak ya? Yes Prof. Oke. Okay. Uh, gimana? Sudah aja atau gimana? Iya. Yeah. Yes. Oke. Okay. Siapa? Uh, well Prof Go, uh, it's already apa the time for us to. I'm up. I hope I uh, I mean we learn much from your presentation and we will uh, read and we will uh, uh, study more mm -hmm. and then you will give us the apa the paper as uh, we mentioned before through Dr. Adiana and um, in our A faculty there are two laboratory who who usually uh, does research in in IVF something like that but but not applied yet you know we we, we do the embryo in vitro uh, and it frozen ah yeah Oh yeah, no, no. Uh, you freeze the the embryo, isn't it, before you transfer? Because oh, no, 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 not transfer. Sometimes we left over embryo will be frozen for the use. Okay, yeah. ready for you. Um, I think it's enough, <laughs> Prof. Go. Thank you very much for your presentation and uh, to all the students, to the participant, the staff. Uh, thank you for your attendance. And on behalf of the faculty, I think Dr. Adiana would like to show you the the certificate of of this event for you as a speaker. So this certificate is officially awarded to you, Prof. Goyang, PVM, PhD, from, as a guest lecturer uh, in Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, Universitas Erlangga today, August 3rd, 2021. I hope you, uh, you are happy to receive it, and we are happy to having you, your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have? Do you still have something to say? To speak. To say. Okay. If. Okay. I'm leaving. It's okay. Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, thank you, Prof, for your uh, interesting lecture. Thank you, Prof Tita, uh, for guiding the lecture. I would say to thank you, Prof Goyang, and thank you everyone for attending to this guest lecture. And before I end this, uh, please fill the attendance, and you will get a certificate in your uh, email. Uh, If any, uh, if this guiding, uh, this event, I am mistake or often some here, someone here, uh, please forgive me and good afternoon. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah. Matunun Prof. Tita. Matunun Matunun Prof. Lina. Alhamdulillah, selamat ya Bu Tita, luar biasa. Tetap selamat. sehat, semangat, ya. Bu Tita. Ya. Terima kasih banyak buat Diana, ya. Sami-sami, dokter. Nanti masih ada lagi ya untuk repron, ya. Kapan-kapan.